Wednesday. The International Labor Organization estimates there are 40.3 million victims of human trafficking around the world. That's just heartbreaking, and it includes hundreds of thousands in the U.S. Chances are it's actually happening in your neighborhood. We're about to hear, though, from one business owner who decided to make a difference in her community. Cafe owner Kim Taylor decided to change the lives of six survivors of trafficking by buying all of them business licenses. Kim joins us now along with Tiffany McGee, the CEO and founder of Survivor Ventures. That's the local not-for-profit that Kim partnered with to make these donations. So Kim, Tiffany, good morning to both of you. We're thrilled to have both of you on. Kim, I want to start with you. Tell us what did inspire you to make such a generous donation to these six women? Well, you know, we learned of them um, through a through a partnership that we have. And so us being, we smoothly stopped being a woman owned business. We wanted to um, partner with them and um, we um, help them empower, um, empower our women economically to, mm -hmm. to just, um, I mean, just to, just to be there for them. I mean, we just wanted to partner with them so that they can do and um, what they would love to do and empower their own selves and empower their own lives. Yeah, and I think what you're saying there is so important, that word empower. And Tiffany, that's what I want to ask you about with Survivor Ventures, this focus on economic empowerment for survivors of trafficking. Why is that piece of support for a survivor so important in particular? Right. So the reason, one of the reasons why we founded Survivor Ventures in the first place is um, because uh, domestically speaking, uh, trafficking survivors are often arrested for their role as victim in the trafficking situation. Um, upon rescue or escape, or more frequently released from jail, survivors are in dire need of essential supportive services for themselves and their children. They want to work and they want to provide for their children, but unfortunately, many states lack effective criminal record relief legislation for confirmed trafficking victims. As service providers, we do our best to help survivors find employment, but due to survivors' criminal records, they can only get minimum wage jobs, and that rarely provides 40 hours a week with no ability to make ends meet. Mm. So when their shelter stays and follow-on assistance end, they often cycle back to homelessness and other positions of vulnerability that led to the trafficking in the first place, which results in really high rates of re-trafficking. So to disrupt this cycle, we partner with, with small business owners like Kim and the Smoothie Stop um, in order to create gainful employment opportunities. Um, we have a program called Survivors to Entrepreneurs that provides wage reimbursements for startups. Kim, how has this changed your perspective when it comes to trafficking? And what is the relationship with these, with these six individuals you've helped out? You know, when they came to our location in Hampton, we had, I had a chance to actually talk to the women to hear their experiences and to hear um, the things that they've gone through. And so, um, just hearing their stories, you know, has impacted me because be, to go, have gone through those things and still press forward to to make a better future for themselves and open up businesses. I mean, it's it's I mean, it's I can't even describe the feeling that uh, it made me was want to work harder as a business owner myself. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That's incredible to hear. Now, Tiffany, human trafficking is often really misunderstood, especially when it comes to understanding that this could be happening in our own backyard. Misconceptions, even something like confusing it with the international slave trade, as it often is, actually, can stereotype these survivors. How can raising awareness help combat this and help get these people who have been through this into jobs and on the track that they want to be on? Yeah, that's all exactly right. There's been so many human trafficking awareness campaigns, um, but a lot of people still don't understand what it really looks like. Uh, we wear blue on National Human Trafficking Awareness Day, but we continue to have some of those serious misconceptions that you just mentioned, that it only happens to foreign nationals, it always involves handcuffs or bondage. But human yeah. trafficking, by definition, involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion to obtain t some type of labor or commercial sex act. And the majority of cases in the U.S. involve the fraud and coercion side of it. So if we start to understand that it's actually vulnerability that grows um, trafficking, uh, things like poverty, low self-esteem, unstable housing, addiction, isolation, loneliness, um, just one of those things can be exploited by a trafficker. So when we're talking about awareness, we should start at home 
um, at social media platforms in schools and um, help people in those spaces understand their vulnerabilities and how to protect against predators eager to exploit them. Tiffany and Kim, thank you for everything you're doing to raise awareness and to help out. And we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us this morning. And we do want to tell our viewers, if you think